Hey everyone, this is Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime. And today Reggie was all up on it <laughs> when it came to E3. Because believe it or not, we are less than three months away from the big E3. And if you guys remember last year's E3, Nintendo essentially showed up with just Zelda. The Nintendo Switch wasn't even there. It really wasn't even talked about. And Zelda just blew everyone's minds, and it has gone on to become one of the highest rated games of all time. And in my opinion, it deserves much of the praise it has gotten. However, this is a new year. The Switch has arrived. We know that Mario Odyssey is off in the distance. We know that Splatoon 2 and ARMS are both on the horizon, along with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. And we know that Nintendo has previously said that the 3DS is going to continue to get support, and we have seen some 3DS game announcements. Uh, none that are necessarily as big as a Pokemon game, but they are significant games at that, at least from the third-party perspective. So the 3DS is not getting no games, as it were. And... Reggie fils was on Fox News. They have this gaming segment, supposedly, on Fox News now, uh, where Reggie talked about their plans for E3. So here is exactly what he said. E3 is always a big time for Nintendo. We look at each E3 as a unique opportunity to tell our story. And we're going to have a big E3 this year. We're going to be showcasing a variety of games. We will have experiences for consumers will be able to attend the show for the very first time. So I'm not going to tell you all the various games and all of our little secrets for E3. But I can tell you that E3 is going to be a major opportunity for us to showcase not only Nintendo Switch, but also content coming to the Nintendo 3DS. That's all he had to say on E3. Now... Some people are blowing up this news a little bit, saying that uh, you know E3 is gonna they're, they're gonna have a huge E3 because he said they're gonna have a big E3, and I feel like Nintendo kind of rolls that PR wagon every single year, always saying that they're gonna have a big E3. Uh, even last year they only had one game and they said, hey, we're gonna have a big E3. It's one game, but we're gonna have a big E3. And we kind of knew that going in. This time, you know, it, it's always funny when he's like, oh, I'm not going to tell you all of the various games and all of our little secrets. Well, not only are you not telling all of your games and all of your secrets, you're not telling us any of your games or any of your secrets. He does not even mention the games in this interview, even ones we already know about, like Mario Odyssey. He could have easily just been like, hey, look, Mario Odyssey is going to be there. You know, Splatoon 2 is going to be there. But he didn't do that. So, it is what it is. So, obviously, the hype train begins, right? This is the first mention from Nintendo of E3 specifically that they are going to be there, which, of course, they are. And they're going to try to have a bigger presence. So, what does this all mean? Right now, not a whole lot. In fact, I'm not really even that impressed. Um, not because I... I'm not excited. I'm always excited for E3. I attended my first E3 last year. It was fun. It was great. It was dandy. And I would love to attend this year. I'm probably not going to. It's a it's a pretty big financial commitment for me living in Wisconsin to fly all the way out, stay at hotels, all that shindig. It was more expensive than I planned for last year. I went over budget on my stay. So I, I kind of kind of cut back this year. But that's okay. Uh, Nintendo is going to try to blow people away. I don't know if they can. Uh, if you guys remember, Xbox Scorpio comes out later this year, so Microsoft's going to have a huge blowout, which I believe they're doing on Sunday now. Uh, so Nintendo's is usually on Tuesday, Microsoft's usually on, when, on Monday with Sony, but now Microsoft is kind of taking over Sundays. So Xbox Scorpio buzz is going to be flying high, and there's been promised to be a bunch of unique games of that. So I don't know what Nintendo can do. But I do want to start the hype train up a little bit, because... Whether or not you are happy about it, which we're Nintendo Prime, so I'm assuming you're pretty happy, the Nintendo Switch has a lot of momentum going for it right now. It is selling out. It has a really, really high attach rate for Zelda, but I, you know, we don't actually know sales figures yet. So I, I, you, know, you want to say that you know people are only buying the system for Zelda. Maybe that's true. I don't know. 
I, I know I have more than Zelda. I have one, two switch. I have snipper clips. I am probably going to own Binding of Isaac here soon. It looks like a very interesting indie game that I haven't played. And the one on Switch has all of the DLC included. So that's something that really is enticing to me because it almost costs just as much as it does uh, to get all that together. 40 bucks, whatever. Anyways, Nintendo Premium cartridges, whatever. Yada, 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 yada. We can debate about the Nintendo price or the Nintendo tax some other day. Um, reality is that they have a lot of momentum going. And by the time they finally have enough in stock to meet demand, which we're hoping that's sometime next month, sometime in April, that Nintendo's going to need, you know, another big hitter. And that's what they're hoping Mario Kart is. And then they need to keep that momentum going again, and then you have ARMS come out. Then you got to get that momentum going again, and uh, E3? Because Splatoon's probably not coming out till July, or June after E3. So, it's one of those things where I think Nintendo has to say they're going to have a big E3, and they have to execute on having a big E3. Because Sony's going to come out with games, 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 and more games, because that's what Sony does. Whether those games are coming out now, or they're not coming out for three or four years, it doesn't matter. Sony likes to tease their fans, and tease gamers in general, and promise a wide bevy of games, which, you know, to their credit, they have started delivering on in the last year and a half. And Microsoft is going to be hyping up brand new hardware, right? They have the Scorpio coming, the most powerful home console system of all time. You know, unless you have, like, a gaming PC <laughs> that you just hook up to your TV. But that's okay. I mean, th there's always, you know, a, a market for home consoles, like what, what Xbox is doing with the Scorpio. And you have Nintendo, the hybrid system, the I do a little bit of everything system, the I am the best handheld system in the world and I'm, a, I'm an okay home console. I mean, let's just admit it. It's not a bad home console experience so far. Obviously, Zelda helps. But, you know, I got to say, I've played Zelda on my 1080p TV in my office. I've played it on a little 720p TV. I've played it on a 4K TV. That's 65 inches. And I've played it on a 1080p 50-inch TV. And obviously, in handheld mode. And it holds up. It's a full-on home console game that I personally don't feel is really held back by the hardware. Uh, and that's saying something considering that it's technically a Wii U game ported. So Nintendo needs to keep emphasizing, you know, they've been emphasizing it's a home console. Zelda's the biggest proving point to it being a home console. Mario Kart, you could argue is, Splatoon is, but you could see how Splatoon or Mario Kart might work on a handheld device over a home console. So I'm very interested to see at E3 how Nintendo hammers home the thing they've been hammering the whole time, that this is not a handheld that you can use on your TV. It is a home console you can take with you. And for that, you need big AAA games. Because that's that's really a differentiator between a gaming PC and home consoles versus handhelds, like the 3DS or your phone. It is big, hard-hitting AAA games. So my hype levels are going to be through the roof, hoping that Nintendo not only comes with like the games we know about, but they also surprise us. Maybe we get a Red Dead Redemption 2 announcement? That would definitely be coming completely out of left field, considering that they haven't even released Skyrim Remastered yet. And um, other AAA games um, that we know about, there isn't a whole lot that we know about, but we haven't seen a, a, you know, a big budget AAA game from a third-party developer release on the Switch and have success yet. So it would be weird to see Red Dead Redemption 2 kind of take the leap before that's happened. But, again... Games are going to typically go where the consumers are. And Nintendo seems to be targeting an adult audience so far with the Switch. And if they continue to do that, then there's going to be a massive audience for third-party AAA games. So at E3, I'm really hoping that we, we hear all these partnerships that they're touting. That we hear brand new or already announced big AAA games coming to the system. I think it would be huge if they had the new Assassin's Creed come to the system. Uh, you know, that game's had two, three years, you know, in development, maybe even more because, you know, they used to rotate with different teams. So every game took like three years to make, kind of like they do a Call of Duty. And I will, uh, speaking of Call of Duty, I'd love to see Call of Duty announced for it. And I know those are just, you know, your typical yearly franchises, although Assassin's Creed has had a little time off now. Uh, you know, I'd love to see the Maddens of the world announced. We already know NBA is coming. But I really want to see some of these bigger third party games. Um, I don't know if I want to see, necessarily see something like a backport, like, does Mass Effect Andromeda really need to be ported to the Switch? Probably not. 
you know, you could argue the same thing for Skyrim, but, you know, Skyrim's one of those all-time classic games that people just would like in a more portable fashion than their laptops, so I, I can kind of see where that might make sense. Andromeda isn't getting super high reviews. Who knows what the sales are like yet? I, I don't think people are going to view it as an all-time classic like they do the original Mass Effect. Still, I would like to see these announcements come out. I'd like to see Nintendo bring their big guns, announce the Metroids, announce these franchises that don't necessarily sell super, super well, but really hit on that hardcore home console audience, and obviously bring new IPs to the table. I know that's asking a lot. That's asking Nintendo to basically empty the farm and give us everything they got. And I don't really think that's too much to ask because they haven't given us a lot you know, if you want to look at what they've done on the home console side, they haven't really given us a lot over the last couple of years. So it's time for Nintendo to unleash the guns. Unleash the bad boys. Let us know what's happening. Keep hammering home that home console and show that you're going to have a more consistent game release slate with AAA games from third parties sprinkled in. Because if you can bring the third parties on board with this system, man, you thought the Wii was successful? Mm. Mm. And I'm not making a prediction here because... You know, we, we, we don't know, but if the third parties are there with the Nintendo games and Nintendo maintains that sales momentum, whoo boy, the hype train, people. It is here, E3 2017. As always, I am Nathaniel Ruffle Jance from Nintendo Prime, signing out.